Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. So today I'm going to work through the top 10 picking techniques for bass guitar and hopefully give you some food for thought going forward because as much as some of these techniques are incredibly popular, there's a good chance that some of these techniques will be totally new to some of you and could be a total revelation for others. All of these techniques bring a different tone and feel to the table when playing bass lines, and I personally like to practice using all of them. It's not a competition for the best all-round way to play, they're all great for different things. I'll give a little description and demonstration of each technique as we go, so let's get straight into it. So, first things first, we have the one finger pluck. This is about as straightforward as it gets. We place the thumb on a pickup or a string and we pluck with one finger, usually the index finger. This technique is great because of its consistency. You're going to get a nice consistent tone and attack as you play because we're not moving between two different fingers and it's just plain easy to get started. The downside, of course, is the lack of speed and it can be pretty hard to move across the strings in an ascending fashion at any kind of tempo. However, the most famous and most accomplished exponent of this one finger technique is James Jameson of Motown fame. Jameson played some pretty sophisticated bass lines all with that one finger that he called the hook. He used raking and open strings to make up for some of the deficiencies in the technique. And if you had any doubts about how far you can take that one finger pluck, just listen to the What's Going On album by Marvin Gaye or any of Stevie Wonder's big hits of the 60s like For Once In My Life. Unbelievable playing. For picking technique number two, we have two finger picking. This is obviously the most common finger style method for bass guitar and as you're all probably aware, we simply alternate plucking between index and middle fingers. Two finger picking is a great all round approach to finger style because we can play with much more speed and freedom than that single finger pluck. Like I said, this is the most common method for playing bass, so I don't really need to expand too much on it, but it's also worth knowing that when it comes to thumb placement, you can either make use of thumb anchoring, whereby we place the thumb on a pickup or string, or you can try your hand at floating thumb technique, which involves moving the thumb flat across the strings alongside the picking hand. And this helps to mute every string below the one that we're playing at all times. So check out Gary Willis and Todd Johnson for extra information on floating thumb. When it comes to demonstrations of how far you can take two finger picking, check out obviously Jacko Pastorius for the jazz and funk side of playing, and Steve Harris of Iron Maiden on the metal side. Jacko changed bass technique forever when he exploded on the scene in the 1970s, and Steve Harris is an example of insane stamina and speed in a rock or metal setting. If you want some music to work on your two finger technique, Jacko and Steve Harris will keep you busy for quite some time. Next up, let's add another finger into the mix. So this is gonna be three finger picking. This is essentially the same technique as one or two picking, but we just add that third finger in there. picking allows you to play faster than with two, and it's great for playing a lot of the metal gallop lines, but without the stress that you get from playing with two. The only downside to playing with three is that it can be a little confusing when it comes to playing groupings of two or four, because you have to switch the accented finger each time. So if you're playing a standard one with three, have to start switching the accents, but it's doable, you just need practice. If you want to see some great three finger picking, then Billy Sheehan is probably the most popular exponent of the technique. But you can also check out other metal players like Alex Webster from Cannibal Corpse, or virtuosos like Steve Bailey. I've also made quite a few videos on three finger technique here on the channel, so I'll link to some of those in the description. Next up, let's look at something a little different, the one finger flutter picking technique. Now this is where we use a single index finger, but in a back and forth motion so we get a downstroke and an upstroke. This allows you to build up a lot of speed with only one finger, and you might even find you can play faster with one than you can with two or even three. <laughs> this 
This is a great technique for playing on a single string, but it starts to falter a little when crossing strings, especially with consistent attack and tone. If you want some good examples of this technique in action, check out Brian Bella, session legend Chuck Rainey, or some of Geddy Lee's playing with Rush from the 90s onwards. I've created a lesson dedicated to this technique with an example tune from Rush, which again I'll link to in the description below. Next up we have another picking technique which avoids use of any fingers for plucking. Plectrum or pick playing. For this, we obviously use a pick held between the index finger and thumb, and it gives you a totally unique tone with loads of attack. <laughs> are often looked down upon by some bass players, but that is just musical snobbery. Playing with a pick is no easier than playing with fingers. In fact, for most players used to finger style, pick playing can be very difficult to adjust to. I think a lot of the snobbery comes from seeing it as being too closely related to guitar. After all, we're bass players, not guitarists. But like I said, the pick tone is unique, and even though you can get close to it with fingers, what's the point? You might as well just pick with a pick. In playing with a pick, you have to develop your alternate picking and muting. Muting the unwanted strings can be much more difficult because we don't have the thumb available for anchoring. That means using a combination of the picking hand heel and the fingers of the fretting hand. If you want some good examples of pick players on the metal side, check out Dave Ellefson's playing with Megadeth. It's beautifully clean and consistent at high speed. Chris Squire also has one of the most recognisable bass tones in music history, so check out his playing with Yes. Then on the funk and pop side, check out Bobby Vega. If you have any doubts about how funky or just plain brilliant a picked line could sound, Bobby is the man. And then on the jazz side, pick playing is a little rarer, but Steve Swallow is one of the greatest electric jazz bassists ever, and guess what? He plays with a pick. Next up we have thumb plucking. Now I don't mean slapping, that's another technique all its own. I mean picking with the thumb. You just rest the hand there on the bass and pluck with the thumb, which gives a much more mellow sound. Thumb plucking has obvious disadvantages in speed of playing, but nobody is going to be looking to play Chopin with the thumb in this way. That's not the point. This style is all about tone and feel. There's less attack because of the softer, wider, fleshier area of skin on the thumb, and also because of the different angle of attack. We're less likely to have that clank of the frets, so everything is just smoother and more mellow sounding. Sting is one of the most famous exponents of this style of playing. You'll see him using the thumb all the time when he's going for a more bassy sound, but then pick when he's going for a more attacking rock sound. Next, let's look at something a little different, finger strumming. Now, yes, bass is primarily a one note at a time kind of instrument, but there are times when you might want to strum some chords. The most popular way of strumming with the fingers on bass is with this in-out action of the hand, so that the fingernails catch on the strings on the upstroke and the fingertips or slight end of the nails on the downstroke. You also have the option of placing the thumb on the bass or not. Strumming is a very niche kind of technique and you're only really going to use it for that hard attacking chordal stuff. There are some famous exponents of strumming like Stanley Clark, who used it famously for the line in school days, and Les Claypool who tends to use a lot of strumming combined with his slapping, popping and every other technique that you care to mention. Next up we have palm muting. Now this is pretty much an addition to one of the other two techniques we've already covered. Palm muting involves placing the heel of the picking hand against the strings to give us this muted sound and you can combine it with either thumb plucking or plectrum. As well as using the heel of the hand, you can also use sponge or a muting device to create that muted bass tone. Whichever way you want to create that muting, you'll find it great for playing any old school Motown or soul bass lines, double bass lines, reggae lines, and anything that requires that thudding bassy tone. Carol Kay is a huge advocate of this form of muting, and you'll see other bass players using the palm muting technique in all styles, including even modern virtuosos like Yannick Guizdala. 
For technique number nine, we have a special technique that might be new to many of you, and that can be incredibly useful for lots of different applications. I'm talking about free stroke and specifically four finger picking. Free stroke is a technique where we don't anchor the picking hand thumb to the base at all. The arm just lies loosely against the body, and then we use a combination of the thumb, first, second, and third fingers for picking, allowing them to pluck and return back up into the hand. So you can play with two fingers like this, three fingers, or four fingers. Four finger picking allows you to play at incredibly high speeds on bass. It also allows you to switch between techniques incredibly quickly and move across the strings effortlessly. From a pure technique perspective, four finger free stroke technique allows for limitless freedom on the bass. Now, there are a couple of downsides to this technique. The first is that you're more likely going to want to add a ramp to your bass. Ramps are curved pieces of wood added under the strings to stop the fingers from digging in too much, and ramps help a lot with this technique. The other downside is the tone. Free stroke tends not to have the fat tone that you'll get from playing with common two or one finger picking. Because of the angle of string plucking, the tone becomes a little thinner in general. So instead of you get However, you do have the option of sticking to the single thumb for a fatter sound. It's only going to change as you bring the index, middle, and ring fingers into play. The weird thing about this is that it can become almost too articulated as you play, something that you might want more of when picking with regu uh, regular finger style. So, uh, you know, go figure. If you want some good examples of four finger picking, there's no better choice than the absolute master, Dominique Di Piazza. He has incredible technique combined with beautiful phrasing and improvisational skills. Matthew Garrison and Hadrian Ferro are also virtuosos with incredible four finger picking chops. This technique is definitely more prominent in the jazz world, but I wouldn't be surprised if more players began adopting this way of picking in more rock and metal styles. Metal heads tend to like speed, and well, you know, this technique is the ultimate way of gaining that speed. Finally, let's look at chordal free stroke. Now this is another form of free stroke, just like the previous four finger picking style, but we're using it more for arpeggiation of chords on bass. Again, we rest the arm against the body and then pluck with a free stroke, unanchored from any strings. This style of playing contains all of the same advantages and disadvantages as the four finger picking that we looked at, but you'll find it much easier way out without the need for a ramp. There are a whole host of players that play chords on bass using this technique. In rock, we have guys like Billy Sheehan and Stu Hamm, then pretty much all the virtuoso players like Victor Wooten and Hadrian Ferro make use of it, then one other big shout out should be to Jeff Berlin, who plays a lot of chordal pieces on bass. Check out his version of Dixie for a great application of this technique. Okay, so there you go. That's 10 different ways of picking on the bass. I hope I've highlighted a few techniques that you've never heard of, and hopefully it'll inspire some of you to dig a little deeper. Like I said before, none of these are better or worse than the others. By practicing all of these techniques, you can make use of the correct technique for any occasion. So check out the other lessons in the description below, and then you can check out the Talking Bass website, where you'll find over 600 free bass lessons on every topic, all organized for ease of navigation. You can also sign up for the totally free membership, where you'll find a bunch of ebook downloads, lessons, forums, chat groups, and then if you want to go a little further, there are the premium courses available to purchase in the store. So go check it out, and I'll see you next week.